Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're going to be doing is setting up SteamOS 3 on this mini PC right here. SteamOS 3 is the exact same operating system that is currently on the Steam Deck. Even when you boot into this the first time, it gives you a tutorial as if you are on the Steam Deck. But we're going to be using this as a gaming console that I'm going to hook up to my main TV in the living room. And it's awesome because I can use an Xbox 360 controller or really whatever I want with it and it will function perfectly. And in most general cases, this is the only thing that I'm going to need to actually navigate around the system, install games, go through the Steam store, and actually play those games. Ace Magician here reached out to sponsor this video primarily to promote their uh, cool little gaming PC here. But we're going to be using it as an opportunity to turn their little gaming PC into the game console. Now this can be done with just about any system that can handle whatever games you want to play. So roughly half of this video is going to be talking about the hardware of this thing. And it's pretty cool, I wouldn't skip it. I mean, it has an actual dial right here to control how much power your CPU gets and it opens up here for easy uh, upgradability. And the second half of this video is going to be basically a tutorial, getting everything set up and running, including some additional tips and tricks that I've noticed. One, getting Wi-Fi to work on this thing uses uh, a separate kernel, and we're going to get Fall Guys working, which is currently a Windows-only game that doesn't even work with normal Proton. And I will note at the start that this is an AMD machine. Actually, running SteamOS 3 doesn't require an AMD machine. They've recently added support for NVIDIA and Intel, but it definitely works best on AMD. And we're not even actually going to be doing this with an official release of SteamOS. It hasn't been released by Valve, but thanks to the fact that everything's just open source, it's, it's going to be available to us through a project called Hollow ISO, which is basically Arch with an installation script that will get everything that we need to get SteamOS on this guy. Speaking of this guy, let's dive into the hardware here. My specific configuration here is uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM with a 512 gigabyte SSD. And the CPU in this guy is a Ryzen 5 5600U, which is a pretty good little uh, mobile CPU here. When I first got the packaging, it's pretty nice. It's just the computer, a HDMI, and the 19 volt power brick. On front here, we're going to have two USB 3.0s, an audio jack, as well as a type C port right here. And flipping it onto the back, we're gonna have two more USB 3s, a display port, HDMI, LAN, and our DC 19 volt power in. Now, if you watched any of the Minisform videos that I've made, a key feature that I love about little computers like this is accessibility. When you have to like pull off little foot things to get the screws and all that, super annoying. This one, as you saw, you just kind of pop off the side here and have full access both to your dual channel RAM and you have two MBME SSD slots right here. Comes with one with a little heat sink, but there is a spare if you want to throw two in there, very nice. Now, a part of me making sure that this wasn't a piece of crap for the sponsorship was I completely tore this thing apart to actually see more of the internal components. Taking it apart is pretty easy. There's five screws here, it allows you to pop this off, and then it's a little jankety. You, I can tell you're not supposed to do this, but then you just pop out the entire board. And there's some connectors and wiring hooked up. One is for the actual uh, switch up here on the top, and there are two RGB headers, which is uh, real nice. I'm gonna talk about the RGB in a sec, but it's nice it's an option to unplug those. I actually went ahead and ripped off the coolers for this device just to make sure that the CPU had proper thermal paste and all that. It does, it's a little messy, but it does. Now on the top here is the switch. We have a couple different modes. We have silent, auto, and performance. Now what this is essentially doing is throttling the power that our CPU actually receives. So silent is going to take us to 15 watts, Auto is 20 watts and performance is 25 watts with a max of five above that. So that would be 20, 25, and 30 watts. And this even translates to frame rates. If you go from silent to performance and you're in a game, you're gonna notice a substantial frame rate increase. Me personally, it's a little gimmicky unless if you really want to be able to make this completely silent and low power. For me, I'm just gonna have it always boosted up to performance because that's what I want. Now, this device it does ship with Windows and uh, on Linux, there's absolutely no problems, but on Windows, I did have a couple I do have to mention. One is if you allow your computer to go to sleep, it just completely bypasses this switcher for some reason. It doesn't do that in Linux, but in Windows, 
you have to restart your computer otherwise this just won't work and two rgb isn't the best they do have an rgb application on their website with a couple different options but if you restart your computer it doesn't save and it always defaults to here i'll show you it's probably exactly what you'd expect it's rainbow rainbow rgb you can see if i switch it here blue is silent green is auto and red is performance just to kind of give you a little indication of what setting you're on and we can actually see this in action what i did first while on windows is i fired up cinebench to go ahead and max out the cpu and see if there was any differences between these modes in performance and switching it from silence to performance for example will instantly jump from 2.2 gigahertz to about 3.4 gigahertz but with that aside we're not screwing around with windows anyway completely wiped it and I threw on the latest LTS version of Ubuntu. As for the RGB on Linux, I did try to load up OpenRGB, but it's not detecting the device itself. It is fairly new, so hopefully the compatibility for this will come soon. Now, before I try to put SteamOS on this thing, I loaded up the games in Ubuntu just to make sure that they will play. Splitgate at 1440p with high settings. Soft frame rate sitting between 70 and 80 in performance mode. And when I did drop it down to silent mode, there was a loss of about 20 frames per second. So it's kind of like this switch is like a artificial FPS boost. But now that we know the ranges, it's going to be kind of cool to see if a gaming specific distribution, Arch as well, will uh, make this perform a little bit better. So now for the SteamOS installation, the first thing you'll want to do is go over to the Hollow ISO github page and there you can see a lot of different information including what is actually working some of the known issues which revolves around nvidia and intel gpus various prerequisites and some screenshots if you want to kind of see what you're getting yourself into if we head over to releases we'll be able to download the iso so just click on that scroll down just a little bit and then you are going to see the actual download link here and then what you're going to want to do is get a usb just like this this one's a 64 gig but i think you only need a 4 gig to get this to work flash your ISO to this device if you're in Linux you can just go ahead and use GNOME disks set it as restore and you're good to go if you're on Windows you can use something like Etcher or Rufus and you should have no problems at all all right so we are now in our USB and this is the very first option you're going to get before it boots into the system we have the SteamOS installer and then this uh, higher compatibility option. Regardless of your system, it's probably a better idea to go with this one just because it has much better Wi-Fi support. I know with my system in particular, this option doesn't support my Wi-Fi card, so just a better bet to go with this one right here. This is actually the hollow ISO image versus the uh, Neptune kernel right here. So let's go into here and then it's going to go ahead and boot us in. And what this is going to do is actually boot us into a live desktop environment. And this does differ from uh, previous versions of hollow ISO. So because before it was all CLI based, which in my opinion was more intuitive and a little bit better, but this is what it is. So here we are with the live environment booting up. And first things first, what we're going to do is go down and see if we can connect to some Wi-Fi here. You can see a lot of options are not no longer available to me. I'm kind of happy it did that because this is a good demonstration of one of the issues it has. For me, see it going. I figured out a good way to fix this is to enable airplane mode, disable airplane mode, and then I'm going to go connect and then type this in and connect. And up here we have some options. We have the true option, install SteamOS, return to gaming mode and keyboard stuff. We want to ignore everything for now except for install SteamOS. Here I'm going to zoom in a bit so you all can see it better, make it a little bigger. So. Here, this is your installation type. You have bare bones or deck experience. We're going to want to go with the full deck experience. Hit OK. And now this is going to be the device that we're installing it on. For me, I know it's my only NVMe drive on there. And if you're unsure up here, you can get some more specific information on the drive. I'm going to go OK. And let's erase the entire thing. And then from there, it's going to give us a rundown of what it's going to do as far as partitions. So we're going to go yes. Proceed anyway. I'm going to go Y because this does have a SteamOS currently installed, but I'm reinstalling it. So let's go yes to continue. And here we go. Now there's maybe another point when you run it into issues, sometimes the repositories aren't the best. So if it, you have download errors, just retry again in a little bit. So from here, this might take a bit. So we're just going to patiently wait until it's a 
about done. And you may see a bunch of warnings and errors and all that. It's okay, it's all just part of the process. And from here, we're gonna go with our host name. So for this, I'm just gonna call it SteamOS. And then we want a password for our root user. Make sure that that is a strong, complicated, and secure. So let's go okay, and then re-input that password. So okay, and now we're gonna do our username for our main user, okay. And then again, give that user its own password. So let's go okay type it in again and okay. So now it's gonna go ahead and retrieve and install some of these packages here. Now it's setting up the locales, installing all the packages it needs to make a full functioning Steam OS system. And then after about five minutes or so, you are going to get this, choose your GPU type. This, like I said, is an AMD system. You will definitely have the better experience on an AMD system. But if you have a different GPU, you can try one of these, but your experience and your uh, overall satisfaction may differ extremely. So let's go ahead and go AMD. And here we go. It's finally actually installing all these packages. And then when the installation finished, it's going to look just like this. So let's hit any key to exit. At this point, there shouldn't really be much you need to do. Let's just go ahead and go down here and restart our system. So let's hit restart. And when the actual uh, grub menu comes up, there is going to be a different selection that we make. I just unplugged the USB. And now that it's booting up here, SteamOS is the default, but if we go under advanced, this is what I want. These, This is all of our other options. Like I said earlier, Neptune is the SteamOS kernel and Hollow ISO is the latest, I believe it's 5.18 kernel, at least as of recording this video. Me, I already know that my Wi-Fi is not going to work on the Linux-Neptune. You could go ahead and boot in, try it, see if everything works for you. If it does, fantastic. But me, I'm gonna go with this one right here, just to save myself a little bit of time in the near future. And here we are, we've landed in the near future. This is SteamOS. So at this point, I'm actually gonna be using an Xbox 360 controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and select English, Pacific Standard Time, and here is Wi-Fi. If I wouldn't have switched the uh, option in the grub menu, this just would have said connecting or no networks or whatever. So I'm gonna select my network. And let's go ahead and input our password. And I just checked, made sure it's right. So let's go ahead and connect to that. And the connection was successful. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and continue. And now it's going to go ahead and finish the installation process. You can see down there at the little menu, it automatically detected the fact that this is in fact an Xbox controller. So it's going to go ahead and shut down and reboot real quick. Now, again, when this comes up, I'm going to boot into the hollow ISO version and I'm going to make it so it automatically does that for me in a grub customizer in just a moment. All right, so here we are in the sign-in, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just type this in. I'm just going to use the keyboard for this, make my life a little easier. Type in our password, and then we're going to go ahead and sign in. And now let's go ahead, type in our little code here that we got from Steam. Go down to sign in, and then there we go. Welcome to the Steam Deck. And it's pretty cool, but it's, uh, using the actual Steam OS image for the Steam Deck, so... If I press any button, it's gonna continue. Kind of give me a little tutorial of what's going on. The buttons aren't in the right places. Obviously, this is not a Steam Deck, but we could kind of go through and see some of the stuffs it gives us. I can pretend and wish that I actually had a Steam Deck through this process and then continue on. Now, what we need to do is a couple things. I am gonna be getting Fall Guys to work, so stay tuned for that. That's gonna be an extra little uh tip and trick throughout this process. Actually, we could go ahead and begin the uh, installation process here. You can see there's no Steam Deck compatibility, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it anyway. Now, what we need to do is two things real quick. I'm gonna hit the main button in the middle, the Xbox button, and under power, go ahead and select that, and we are going to switch to the desktop. And then it's gonna boot us into this environment, very similar to what we saw before. And what I want to do is go ahead and grab a couple things from the Discover Software Center. So from here, I'm gonna search. First thing is going to be Grub, because I don't wanna to have to have a keyboard and mouse plugged in every time and try to switch the uh, Grub settings around. So let's go ahead and install the Grub customizer. And then in addition to that, what we're gonna to want to do is look up Proton. And right here, Proton Up QT, we're gonna install the flat pack of this. And what this is gonna do is give us uh, newer and uh, very specific versions of Proton that will help us get things like Fall Guys up and running. So while it does that, I'm just gonna minimize the window here. I'm gonna go down to Start and open up our Grub Customizer. Now, if the uh, Neptune option works perfectly fine for you, you're probably not gonna need to do this, but depending on your hardware, this may be helpful. So here, 
SteamOS, Linux, Neptune, this is the default. That's not what I want. What I'm actually gonna do is select this right here and then I'm gonna move it up the list all the way to the top. I'm gonna put this one away so I don't accidentally select it. And now this is going to be the default. If I go under general settings here, we have some more options. We can completely disable the menu altogether. We can change the time. I'm gonna keep all this for now, but I'm gonna change the time down to three seconds so I'm not sitting there staring at it. Actually, let's go two seconds. And then over here under appearance settings, we have some more options, not very important. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And there we go, it updated the configuration. So now we're gonna go ahead and check up on our Proton Up. It is done. So to get Fall Guys working, which is probably my biggest priority <laughs> is uh, to get a certain version of this. So we want to open up this application here and we are going to install this for Steam. One thing you're gonna to want to do real quick beforehand is right click down here, exit Steam, and that will completely shut down that application. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do is add a version. So under, there's a version option here. I found the best success with this uh, five dash, or sorry, seven dash 15 version. For Fall Guys, I did try the latest version, which is up here somewhere, but it didn't work. So what I'm gonna do here is click on install, and it will take just a minute to download depending on your internet speed. And then when it's done, it's just gonna pop in right here. We could go ahead and close this out, and let's go ahead and return to gaming mode. This is gonna re relaunch Steam and get us into the uh, actual environment that I hopefully intend on staying in. So I got the Xbox controller in hand now. Let's go over here. It's still downloading. And one thing to note here is if we go into settings, some games might look a little blurry depending on the display that you're running this on. Uh, and that is because the Steam Deck, I believe, is 1280 by 800 or pretty close to 720p. We go over to Properties, and under General, we have Default for the Resolution. You could change this to what you want, obviously base this depending on your actual hardware. For me, 1080p on this monitor is probably going to be perfect. It's actually a 1440p display, but again, the hardware is good for gaming, but not good for super high resolution gaming. So I'm going to back on out of there and then go back. And one of the main things I notice this on most is split gate. Split gate renders pretty good, but some of the like characters and all that are blurry if you do keep it on default. So that is something you're going to want to bump up to 720p. Elden Ring, I had mixed experiences. This game runs awesome. But now let's just go ahead and wait for this uh, Fall Guys to work. But one other thing, while this downloads, we might as well jump into here, go into settings, go down to properties. Under compatibility, we're going to check force to use a specific one. And right there, Proton or GE-Proton715 is the one that we're going to want. That's the one we just downloaded in that uh, Proton Up application. And now we wait. All right, now it's the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and play this. See, it's running the install script for our easy anti-cheat. And then it's gonna do our Vulcan shaders. Let's hit okay. And there it is, the, uh, the forbidden Epic Games overlay. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's agree to everything. Jump on in here, make sure everything actually works. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, so that one doesn't seem to be working anymore. That's one of the uh, cons with uh, doing it this way. <laughs> After a quick little hunt on Reddit, we may have found the issue. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. Or found the solution to the issue. Uh, power. Let's switch back to our desktop. So once again, we're going to head over here, and we're going to get a different version of... Uh, Proton through Proton up, and here we are. So again, let's close out Steam completely. So exit Steam, and it is reported that if we go to version using 721 after installing it with 715 is working for somebody. So we just go install and wait for that to download. And there we go. Let's close this out and boot back into gaming mode. And hopefully. This person on Reddit was right. So let's go settings, properties, go to compatibility, and switch this to 7-21. Now, play. All right, uh, should I do this? Should I do this? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna hit install, and then install. Hopefully that's what we needed to do to initialize our uh, anti-cheat runtime. Let's start. Now I do have a feeling this might work, so let's go into our quick settings here. You For the Xbox controller, you do that by hitting the uh, Xbox button in A. And what we're gonna want to do from here is under performance, let's, uh, let's bump up this uh, overlay here. So you see one, it just gives us the frames. If we bump it up a little more, it gives us some more, some more. 
all the way up to a individual core by core basis. Now I'm going to leave that on like that for now. I'm not actually going to play with it like that, but that will do. And we are in. So that did work. Shout out to you, Reddit person. You are awesome. Okay, it looks like we're hovering about 40 frames per second on this machine, at least thus far on a 1080p. I haven't changed the settings yet, but I'm assuming they're all at medium or high. And here we go. It looks like we're sticking right around the uh, 30 frame per second range, which is very playable. I could uh, bump it down a little bit if I wanted some uh, to pull some more frames out of this here. Uh, let's go this angle. Oh, nope. Let's go options. Where are we at? Where are we at? So looks like we're on all medium. Now, just for giggles to see if we could get squeeze any better performance out of this thing. Let's go uh, 1368. Save that real quick. It did get a little more pixelated, but let's jump in and see if that looks any uh, better for some frame rates. All right, here we go. Looks like at the moment it's hovering around 50. So just that made a huge performance difference for me 30 is still completely fine but i mean i ain't complaining about no 50 either especially with this i can't even really see too much of a quality drop a little bit is noticeable but not much i really don't understand people who can't make it past these first little uh challenges here oh oh oh, oh, oh. Ah, there we go just does not make sense to me oh oh see that see that look at that beautiful so with that working let's go ahead and see our performance in splitgate which is a uh, natively working game we don't need to mess with proton or anything like that all right now we got our splitgate installation up so let's go ahead and launch the game real fast and i did kind of just speed run the uh, tutorial here so let's go ahead and uh, jump on in all right and while this loads i'm going to show you the current settings right now everything is set full quality max epic settings so let, let's see what we got going on here. All right, so we are in, it's looking like on Epic settings. I'm not in any major action here. Couple good dips, but we're hovering around 40 frames per second. So let's see if it keeps up here. So yeah, it's definitely a, a playable, but it's a little choppy at max settings on this device. So I'm probably gonna lower it just a little bit here after I kill the guy I shot. Ah, oh, or he kills me. Okay, so it's averaging about 40 to 50 on high settings. So let's go ahead and bump down the quality of some of this stuff to all medium. And again, I will note that this is on 1080p. So that looks good, all medium. Let's apply those settings and go back. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're up in the 60s, much better. And it still looks absolutely beautiful. Do, 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 do. Oh my, no. When I die, the frame rates go up to like 80, so that's good. I get to see my body flopping around in full quality. Oh, come on. Come on. No. Oh, oh my. Yeah, 9 out of 100. Uh, now, real quick, while we're in here, it's hovering around 50 frames per second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to silent mode so we can see that frame drop to about 30. Not too significant, but a noticeable drop is still very playable on medium settings 1080p with the uh, silent mode enabled, which will limit the CPU performance, thus decreasing the uh, fans and whatnot. Oh no. <laughs> oh god. Okay, let's get out of here. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. You definitely now can get a really pleasant gaming experience on a TV with a remote thanks to Steam OS. They've done some magnificent work and I really can't wait for my name to be called to get a freaking Steam Deck. But this will definitely do for now. This right here, the AMR5 Mini Gaming PC by Ace Magician. There'll be a link down below if you're interested in purchasing it. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video and giving me some pretty cool hardware to go ahead and test this out on. This device will be going in the living room as a new Steam machine. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.